Hi, welcome to the, the last of our indoor series of queen rearing and getting ready for queen rearing. So what we're going to be taking a look at in this, the last of the indoor series on getting ready for queen rearing, are cloak boards. Now cloak boards um, are a really good tool to have. It's the ability to use one hive that's queen right as a starter and a finisher hive. So if you've only got a few hives, what you can do with this is you can utilize a hive, a strong hive on a double root box and you don't have to take the queen away as we showed you in the video last week or yeah last week where you're going to make a swarm box up which would be a queenless starter hive what we do with the cloak board is we make the hive think it's gone queenless in the top half and we do this using what they call a cloak board a cloak board fits in between two of the brood boxes the top and the bottom it's got a queen excluded in, and that's going to keep your queen limited to the bottom brood box and then you've got a top board that when you're ready you can slide in and it will make the top half of the hive appear that it's queenless um, and then after 24 hours you can take this board away and just let all the bees pass through and this is going to keep that queen below so she's not going to come up above and destroy the queen cells that you got started the day before so what we've done is we've got a clock board set up on this hive now we've purposely set up on the polystyrene hive because the outer dimensions of a polystyrene hive is different to what it would be on a wooden hive these clock boards will fit perfectly just like a crown board fits that nice and flush and trim on a wooden beehive but on a polystyrene one it doesn't because the actual walls of the hive are, are thicker on the polystyrene ones and they'll vary from manufacturer to manufacturer but the internal dimensions are the same so when you put one of these cloak boards on a poly hive it's going to do exactly the same as it would on a wooden hive so there's no worry about that the only difference is you're going to get this this ugly gap between the two boxes it's not just going to be a nice flush gap because nobody makes a cloak board for polystyrene hives because you'd have to have a different cloak board for the different makes of polystyrene hives so they're just making for wooden hives now getting hold of a cloak board is not the easiest thing and it's not the cheapest thing in the world thorns and i'll put a link up as normal thorns do sell a cloak board and they'll sell one for the national and they'll sell one for the land trough and I think they're about £37, something like that. Beekeeping equipment, they'll also sell them, but I think they're just for the land trough hives. They, they sell theirs for, which is about the same sort of money. I don't, I've never bought one off Thorns, I'll be honest. I bought one off beekeeping equipment where they used to be in Man Lake. And the queen excluder is a plastic queen excluder. Um, if anybody's really interested, I'll give you the link or the contact details of the man that makes these for me. These are made with a metal queen excluder and it's all made with hardwood and it's all screwed and glued and they do last for years. Instead of getting a metal divider board, this one is made out of Codex. It just is not got the ability to, to do the metal, so it does it with Codex. There is absolutely no difference. To the bees and to your queen rearing ability if this divider board is made of plastic bamboo or metal it doesn't really matter what, what it's made of. it can be made out of absolutely anything all it is is it closes it closes nice and tight those bees above think that they're queenless now there's one or two manipulations and we'll go through them fairly quickly you'll it, when you read it on the internet it sounds really complicated. It's it's silly complicated how it reads. Turn the hive 180 degrees on day one, do this, lift brood up, brood down, put brood away somewhere else. And you look at it and you think, nightmare. Times 180 is 90. And that's silly talking to us. Um, but as I say, it does read as a nightmare. I'll quickly show you running dry as we are now. 
and then later this year when we get outside I'll set one of these hides up uh, with these and what we'll do is we'll follow it all the way through from grafting to putting in the cells uh, to get the cells out, getting them capped off, moving them, putting them in an incubator and emerging, going into mating nooks, we'll do everything from start to finish on certain videos whether it's going to be a cloak board or whether it's going to be a queenless cell starter. The queenless cell starter, if I'm honest, if you're doing it in your first year and you've got the beast to do it with, do it with a queenless cell starter. It's a lot less complicated. This just seems complicated, but if you've only got limited resources, you've got two, three, four lives, however many, this is a perfect way for you because everything carries on as normal. There is no difference uh, to the bees so you're not breaking down hives you're not shaking bees out so this is day one and we'll go a day at a time and what I'll do is I'll put the step by step down the side and what day you're going to do these particular things on so first of all what you're going to do is you're going to turn your hive entrance put these down there you're going to turn this 180 degrees so now you've got this entrance turned 180 degrees so it's facing the opposite direction take your entrance block if you don't have an entrance block uh, a strip of sponge will do if you ain't got a strip of sponge a t-shirt will do if you if you don't have a t-shirt go next door and take one off the washing line um, it's entirely up to you put your entrance block in and you're going to put this hive back on top again so you're going to have it facing the same direction as your entrance was before you've got to make sure though the queen is in the bottom brood box it's no good having the queen in the top brood box you want her limited to the bottom and you want to take this board out and you can just slide it out part way if you want to uh, to be honest it's windy around here and the wind blows up and, and these disappear five miles down the road so I take it out and then you leave it in this configuration for, for 24 hours the bees that are out foraging are going to return and they'll eventually they'll walk up here and they'll find this entrance um, so you're now in this configuration where the bees are coming and going through the, the front entrance and the back entrance is blocked it does say after after 12 to 24 hours uh put your divider board back in i'll be quite honest with you after 12 to 24 hours um i'd be more tempted to leave it the full 24 hours before you put your divider board in so slide your divider board back in now technically what's going to happen is you've now separated your bottom box where the queen is and the top box they're now going to think they're queenless so if you remember what we did we blocked up this back entrance so you want to remove your queen uh, you want to remove your entrance block from the back the bees that, that are trapped in the bottom are literally don't forget you've left sealed brood down so you've always got new bees emerging so you're not going to lose all the bees out of the bottom they're going to fly out the back they're going to go off foraging when they come back they're going to come back to the front entrance because that's what they've known before and they're going to go in through the front so now you've got an excess of bees up in the top box 24 hours after that i normally go in and i'll knock down any queen cells that there is also any open brood that is left in there i'll take out and i'll literally i'll either move back downstairs or i'll, I'll strengthen up another nook somewhere else with that and then i'll do my graphs and i'll put my graphs in exactly the same as we did with the swarm box so you're gonna have your, your brood and then your cells more brood your pollen frames that we've talked about only frames and we're gonna put a weak feed on top so you, ideally you need a top feeder or with these being a, i think these these particular ones in these baseball boxes are a 12 frame box so you can lose a couple of frames and put a frame feeder in there or whatever feeder you've got is a good the, the best feeder for any of these is 
whatever you've got that is the best feeder that you can you can have rather than going out and buying something new or different that you probably don't need because you've already got the resources that you need to do what you need to do so then that's going to be configuration uh on on day two bees are, are leaving there and coming back there so on the third day that's when your graphs go in the next day you can go in see how your graphs are are doing and see what's taken and what's not taken if needs be you can do your graphs again uh, because don't forget they think they're still queenless so if you have made a mess of your graphs not a problem just do them again and then once those graphs have taken so once i've had a full 24 hours uh of being taken as a graph you can take this one out and reunite the hive so bees can come and go whichever way they want what i normally do at this time is block up the back hive and just let them keep using this front hive rather than i know a lot of people that will pick the hive up and they'll turn it around again but it really doesn't matter and that's now you've turned that from a starter into a finisher so you you all in one hive you've got a queen right starter and finisher when the cat cells are capped off you've got two choices what you can do with them you can leave them there until the day before they emerge take them out put them into mating nooks as a cell or if you've used the nicot style cages you can pop cages around with them so they'll emerge inside a cage you can take them out on the day that the captain put them into an incubator like we talked about so the choice whichever way you want to do it is the easiest all this is doing is getting those cells started and that's what you need is to get those cells started if you're a little bit born idle like me i'll be honest and i'm getting old i'm 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 too old um i'm starting to become one of those beekeepers i complain about the old ones um text message <laughs> i really should turn my phone off yes be quiet run run picking up hives and turning them around You can use what one of these uh, and you can really you can literally you can get away using something like this and do something very similar to uh, a cloak board and this is a snail growth board so you could replace your floor with this and that's your front entrance so instead of turning it around all you do is close that entrance off there and open that one there and then you, you got you're not picking up hives and moving them around if you come on our swarm control day course we're probably going to demonstrate how to use this in swarm control because it's got a multitude of uses is this uh i think you can buy these off thorns i don't know how much they are um i'm not even going to hazard a guess how much they'll charge for a snow grove board but if you know somebody that's handy with a piece of wood all it is is a piece of ply you've got a small vent in the middle uh you've got four entrances or exits well tell her that you got three there and then on the reverse you've got exactly the same so you can control the bottom box and the top box through these you will get lots and lots of use out of the snail growth board and we'll do a video this summer showing how to use the snail growth board in in the different ways in queen rearing in swamp control they're very very useful and you'll get a lot of use out of the snail grow board the only problem is with snail grow boards is when you read the instructions in print on an internet site or in a book it sounds so complicated it's like um when they when they demonstrate during an artificial swarm is move box to where box b is on day one on day two move box a back to box b uh and you look at it and you think oh and it sounds a bit scary I really wish. Yes, tweeted by. And it does, it comes over as really scary. Um, and I think that's why a lot of people ignore swamp control because it does sound so complicated. And it's not, it's just the way it's written. If you've liked these videos, please subscribe on YouTube. Click that little red button that says subscribe, share the love uh there's a little bell next week you go bing and then that way you'll get a notification 
every time that we upload a new video onto YouTube.